Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Spark Creativity. Today we're going to be building a lo-fi electric piano sound using the Korg Cross 2. And here's a little sample of the tone. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how we get there. Um, here's our menu. We're in combination mode. I'm gonna try to uh, explain this very generically so that maybe if you don't have a chord cross two, you could use similar practices with your own workstation. So here's our combination mode. You can see the three icons, that's the three electric pianos layered on top of each other. So they're all playing at the same time. Uh, let's look at our program. You can see the different, they call them timbres. So timbre one, timbre two, timbre three. And you can see they're all the same program. Okay, so nothing crazy there. Uh, let's go to our mixer. You can see that the first layer is panned all the way to the left. The second layer is panned all the way to the right. So it's the same patch on the left and right channels. Not very interesting right now, but as we get into the effects, it'll make more sense why we did that. Uh, timbre three is just a very small texture. It's like a gritty, you can kind of hear it in the background. It's um, that kind of vinyl scratch. So that's what that is. Uh, now let's skip ahead to our timbre menu, and you can see the different scale types, the different tunings, and this random feature is awesome. So when you have multiple instruments stacked on top of each other and you have this engaged, they all are playing at a different tuning every time you strike or trigger the note. So that gives it a very cool chorus-y kind of uh, sound. Let me turn this all the way up to seven so you can hear what I'm talking about. So every time I'm striking a note, you can hear that it, um, the different layers are hitting different tunings. So that's why I bring it to three, and that gives it kind of that nice lo-fi texture. Okay, so that's a really, really nice uh, feature that you can utilize. All right, let's go to our effects routing. Go to our first menu on bus. This is where you can kind of see how things are routed. So that first layer, my first timbre, is routed all the way over here to Guitar Amp California. So that's an insert effect that I have only for the left channel, okay? And so then you can see with the second layer, it's routed to a different effect on the right channel. So that's a Guitar Amp Tweed. So they're both different effects and I've have them split so that the effect one is on all the way on the left and effect two is all the way on the right, which gives it a nice stereo effect. Um, and then why don't we look and see, you can kind of see here where the panning is on the left. You can see that's where I was able to pan the amp sounds, okay? So now let's go into these are the effects specifically. So this is for layer one. This was the gar guitar can uh, amp California. These are my settings that gave it a nice color. Here's my wet versus dry signal. And then you can see that I was able to use velocity to kind of increase the amount of the amp effect. Uh, so that is kind of nice. So if you want to play nice and, and um, quiet, it's not going to have a lot of that texture uh, of the amp but if you want to you know if you're playing more aggressive you can hear more of that distortion a little bit more of that color uh, and that's the same with the guitar amp tweed too on the right channel same idea adding velocity 
or the velocity increases the uh, amount of the effect. Uh, very nice to do and uh, to play expressively. All right, and then you can kind of hear it in the background. That's our analog record uh, texture, which is really nice for that lo-fi vibe. And same thing with the velocity. The harder I hit the keys, the more that that crackle will come through, which is kind of nice. Now let's go to our master effects. The master effects uh, basically are kind of like your master channel. It affects everything that's going on. So both the left and the right channels now are uh, feeding into this. And I used a Doppler effect, which is really nice. Kind of gives it a wobbly kind of chorusy vibe. You can hear it kind of creeping in there. Let's backtrack a little bit to show you how much I added of that effect. Right here are the uh, sends. So that's our effect to the Doppler. I only sent about half of the signal to that. I felt that it was a little too, like what happens if I send all, the, all of it? Maybe it's a little too much. You can really hear it there. I, I mean, it's to your taste. If you like more of that, go ahead. I kind of like the way that just sounded, but <laughs> we'll go back to 60. Um, all right, awesome. Now let's go back to our master effects. And we have the Doppler then feeding into the tape echo, and the tape echo kind of glues everything together from the left and right channel. It kind of uh, brings everything uh into the center or we get some bleed into each side of the, of the stereo field, which kind of is really nice. Um, and you can hear it if I just play a quick. Okay, and so that tape echo, if we, if we dive into that a little bit, go to the top. These are the settings. A lot of these are just uh, so the this, this standard setting, like when you engage it. Um, but I did add a little more saturation, and I did increase the wow depth. Uh, that kind of uh, feeds into that lo-fi vibe, and here was my wet-dry. Okay, so that is basically how we got there. We used the left and the right channels to kind of create some uh, stereo effect using different amp simulations, and then uh, some tape echo, some stereo, analog... Um, record sound, and this is what we get. All right, I hope this helps somebody out there uh, in your journey in your sound design using the Korg Cross 2. Can't sp uh, I love this board. Uh, I love it because there's the options are limitless, and uh, you know you have a lot of control to make something the way that exactly that you want it. So love it. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you.